Hey guys and welcome to part two of this RGB modding video on this Mitsubishi set. So as you can see right in front of you we have RGB signal success. However uh, you might not be able to notice that from the video but it's actually quite uh, blown out. Um, I will show you later. Before I move further I wanted to quickly show you how I've been working on this uh, from a test setup, test rig perspective. As, uh, and as you can see here, uh, I've mounted the chassis vertically on a vise on my desk and it's been day and night as how I was doing things before. Um, before I was just leaving the chassis attached to the TV and flipping it every time I wanted to turn it on and off. So this I can highly recommend, it, it makes a heap of difference. Obviously it's easier to do it on a 14 inch than it is to do on a, a bigger, bigger TV. But uh, yeah, how you set things up to work on CRT really make a difference. Um, yeah, anyway, so moving on to the actual results so far. Um, I've, um, I've wired things up by isolating the OSD completely, disconnecting that and inputting an RGB signal um, as per the diagram that we've seen in part one. It works, I've enabled blanking, it blanks fine as you can see, however, um, it's just blown out. It's um, the wire is is too bright. It doesn't look quite right. Now I'm I'm gonna disable blanking, which will uh, default back to the composite signal that is fed through the SCART head because we use uh, a composite signal for the sync signal. And as you can see, uh, it's a lot darker. You can see a lot more details in the skin uh, around there, and also in the text, in the, the white text, uh, for instance, at the top of the screen. So obviously something is not right. So let's take a step back and have a look at the diagram for part one. As you can see here, there are 75 ohm resistors being listed as termination resistors. Having a, a second look at the chassis, I found that this is actually wrong. There are 680 ohm resistors actually redrawn the the diagram in uh, fritzing just to have something cleaner that I can move things around and have different versions and I've redrawn it as it was um, and that's the as far as I understand my the most accurate representation of the of the circuit before we did anything to it I'll just quickly run you to it uh, we have the jungle IC here with pin 25, 27, 29 for RGB. We have uh, 0.1 microfarad uh, capacitors uh, and we have a blanking line here that goes through the diode and another resistor here to uh, the OSD chip. And here we have our um, 680 ohm termination resistors so here's a diagram of what I've done next. Um, I've replaced the resistors, the terminating resistors with 75 ohm, as uh, I found that the old one was uh, 680 uh, to give proper termination for a RGB input. I also completely separated the OSD input just to focus on getting a clean RGB signal first and you know having the OSD completely disconnected temporarily. Now that actually worked well and we got a clean image that was uh, very very similar to composite in contrast and color uh, everything so so that was great. Now the next step was to decide how we, we were going to re-enable uh, OSD. And um, this is where uh, a user from the, the Schmup forum uh, that I mentioned on part one that actually came up with a uh, way, a circuit to MUX OSB and an external RGB input um, came into place. And he reached out to me after seeing the, the first part of the video, offered his help and you know I couldn't have done without him. It was, uh, it was great to have his, his assistance. So his name is Mark Oslad, he's on the, the Schmup forum thread about RGB modding. Um, and he and uh, Syntax uh, came up with a uh, circuit that I'll show here and an Excel sheet. So this is the circuit that they came up with. 
um, on a certain Sanyo TV and that worked for them. Um, similar to what I showed before, you got the jungle ship here on top, you got the OSD pin there, you got some diodes uh, to prevent um, the uh, external, oh, sorry, it's the opposite, <laughs> the OSD is here and the um, external RGB input is here. They're putting diode here to prevent the RGB input to feed back into the uh, OSD chip. And then these um, resistors are calculated based on voltage division. I don't fully understand it, but the, the point is you want to feed those two signals together with these, um, these resistors, basically feed the proper peak-to-peak -peak voltage that is expected by the chip. In this case, I'm, I'm assuming is 0.7 point to point, peak to peak, sorry. Um, and in my case, it was 0.5. Uh, um, so we use the calculator that you can see here to get this value to what the jungle ship, uh, the jungle IC is, is expecting. So after using that calculator, um, we came up with this particular circuit. Um, where we replaced the resistors, we added some diodes, uh, we replaced the resistors with 5.1 kilo ohms um, and inline resistors on the RGB line to 680 ohms. Um, I tried without the 75 ohm uh, inline resistors before the termination to ground and it was a little bit too bright. So adding 75 ohm was again pitch perfect um, with with composite. So this is the final the final circuit we came up with. Um, now this is where it gets uh, a bit tricky, and I spent a lot of time. While this was working well uh, on testing equipment, not on a breadboard with a lot of jumper wires and and whatnot, um, I had to put it all back together. This particular chassis gave me a lot of trouble uh, with traces. The, the chassis was extremely fragile and I ripped a lot of traces. Now, I'm sure it's, you know, my limited skills at, sol at soldering, but compared to all the chassis and, and PCBs I've worked before uh, on, this was like butter. Um, so doing almost nothing on it, you'd rip traces like nothing. To illustrate what I'm talking about, here's a picture of the SCART female connector that I used. By the way, I decided to go ahead with the, the spot, the existing spot for the SCART connector, but I'll, I'll cover that later. And you can see that some of those brown uh, pins there, they were not connected to anything. Um, and even though I used a proper desoldering gun that, you know, rarely ever damages anything on the board the pads they just came right off and they stuck to the head of the of the soldering iron so this left we with one option and one option only was to build the circuit that we saw just before on a separate pcb and wire it to its three different points on the on the chassis one on a jungle ic one on the osd and one being the female SCAT connector. So I build, uh, I build it on this little circuit um, that added a lot of wiring. Um, it's not the cleanest way to do it. I, I really wish I could have done it on the circuit, but the traces were, were unusable. So moving on from that, um, I used shielded wire and I wired it to three different points on the motherboard you can see here the first one going on uh, i added two later and wrap the whole thing in large heat shrink with the three cables uh, hanging off one side i then uh, secured the whole thing with some hot glue uh, that was my last resort unfortunately there was nothing else i could have done better there was nothing to grip on to use cable ties or anything like that and then next i want to talk about uh, the SCART uh, plug. So uh, in part one, I commented on this uh, SCART head placeholder that was on the motherboard. It was only wired for composite. So I actually decided to use this one 
and uh, I had a challenge in, in cutting the hole on the back cover of the TV. But a friend of mine uh, reached out to me and said, look, if you use uh, something like blue tack or, or Play-Doh, uh, you should be able to basically mark by pressing the connector together and have a mark and then you can use that as a template. So I used this idea and while I used uh, blue tack, you can see here that it left some, uh, some residue on the connector. So I wouldn't do that again, but however, I, I, I would use uh, something like Play-Doh. Um, next time because that's less sticky and it's not going to leave that much residue on the um, on the connector so I was able to get a pretty accurate marking cut that with a Dremel and you can see the result is far from perfect but you know I guess it's good enough um, I did make a couple of mistakes there with the head of the Dremel tool and you can see that kind of carved into the plastic so that's unfortunate but you know you live you learn um, I also added a push switch on top as you can see and that just activates blanking if you de deactivate that it uh, reverts back to composite the composite signal and here we have the final result unfortunately video just doesn't give it do it justice it's much sharper and vibrant in person but you get the idea we do have full detail in in the face of the guy over there. The white is not blown out either. It's like I said before, very similar to composite, which, you know, I don't know if it's the right way to do it from a purely technical perspective, but it is what I used as a reference. And now we are going to enable OSD. And as you can see, it's not 100%, but you can very well uh, make out the entire menu. On a white background, you can't make out the text very well, but it's all in all a very positive result. Uh, I'm very happy with it. Um, and here I'll show some footage from some games um, for your enjoyment. Before we conclude this video, I wanted to show one last thing uh, that might be useful if you're looking into doing an RGB mod on a CRT is I've just made these simple things. Look, it's it's nothing too fancy. And you know, if you're comfortable with electronics, you already have these or you've already made these. But they simplified my life a lot. Um, so first of all, use these female to female, male to male, male to female, DuPont, 20 centimeter connector. They're extremely cheap on eBay and AliExpress. They're about a dollar for a bunch of 40. So that that is really helpful, and you can you know daisy chain then if you need a little bit more length. Uh, that's and then lay out your circuit. So this is still part of the circuit that we that we showed a little bit before um, with the capacitors there, some diodes, and that really allows to move things around very easily without. Uh, having to do any soldering. The second thing is a female SCART connector. Um, I use this board here. I know it's not very elegant, but I really enjoy the fact that all the ground pins are connected together. So uh, that's not something I have to do with some some loopy wire from one to another. And I just connect RGB, composite, and if I want, uh, 5 volts in here. Um, I use on this one I use male connectors um, for the RGB lines and there is a composite uh, RCA jack connected on these pins here uh, so that's very helpful as well and if for some reason I need to um, test different impedance um, for uh, yeah, to, to replace that with uh, some resistor at some point later down the track, I use this one kilo ohm uh, trim pots, um, and they have female and male wires on each side. So I just get there in between my circuit, wherever I need to test some different values, and then I trim these. So those three things have really helped me. 
um, experiment and trial and error in defining the right circuit and the right values for the component. That's it guys. I hope you enjoyed. I uh, hope it was informative to some of you. Let me know if you have any questions or comments and I'll see you soon. Cheers.